Hello everyone, Zero Fossil Fuel. Today is Saturday, September 21st, 2013. And today I'm going to start uh, the final few minor modifications that I wanna make to the rocket stove before I start burning it again this year. Worked brilliantly last year, uh, but there were a couple of little annoyances that uh, got in the way and even though it performed extremely well, uh, I wanna make it easier to live with. So what I plan to do is uh, there are three things. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this collar that forms the air inlet right here. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees this way. Uh, I'm going to take the hole that I've drilled in the floor right here and I'm going to drill another hole in the floor behind it on the opposite side of a floor joist and then with the cir circular pieces of wood that I take out of the floor back here, I'm going to use those to fill the hole that was left behind in the front. This is going to open up the front panel so that I don't have to move this hose out of the way to get to get my little hoe in here to rake out the, um, the ashes. The second modification that I'm going to make is to the front door itself. Rather than having wing nuts come off to take the panel away, I'm going to take the angle iron off the front of the uh, box here and I'm going to flip it around 180 degrees uh, so that it extends a little bit beyond and inward from the edges and I'm going to cut down the size of the access plate so that I can just slide it down in front of the brick as a, as a removable door uh, rather than having to spin the wing nuts off. That'll speed the process of getting this brick out so that I can get the, get the hoe in there to rake out the, uh, the ashes. Third and final modification is going to be to add more fins like this directly to the flue pipe on the back. Um, even though the flue pipe only gets up to 180 degrees at its maximum temperature at the top bend, uh, I'm going to reclaim every last little bit of heat that's going out and uh, use it to heat the room. So those are the three modifications I'm going to make. Let's get started. Okay, so I've got a section of eight inch bent pipe that I salvaged from last year's build that was still laying on the ground underneath the, underneath the workshop. And what I'm gonna do is just take this one off. You can see how I have little fingers that reach around the edge of the, uh, the square firebox. I'm gonna take and replicate this on here 90 degrees so that I can set this back down and then have the, uh, the vent pipe, the inlet pipe come up behind the stove to this wall rather than in front of it, which gets in way of the plate. All right, so I'll just take this off, yank this out. <clears throat> And someplace down there, there's one more piece of wood that came out of here that fell down. I am really not interested in crawling under there and getting it because I'll have two more behind here once I make the new hole. Now I can see in the flooring where the, uh, where the flooring has been nailed to the floor joist underneath and the nails are like right here so I'm going to have to offset the hole either very close to the firebox in front of it or way behind it. I haven't really decided yet which way I want to go. Probably, no, I think I'm going to go right here. Yeah. So, time to get the hole saw. Okay, here goes nothing. Let's see. And that's the fun part of using a hole saw, especially a big one like this. It likes to bind.
All right, so the first one is up, first layer. And I'm just gonna pop this out of my hole saw here. And part of what is caught on the teeth is the tar paper that's in between the two layers of three quarter inch plywood that make up the flooring. And there are actually two layers, two layers of roofing material between the two three quarter inch layers of plywood. I'm really hoping that this uh, second one does not drop down through the floor like the first, like it did the first time. Because if it did, I'm gonna have to go out and hunt it down. Crawl underneath the workshop here. I don't really feel like doing that. And of course my battery's gonna die. That's it. Uh, plan B. Back in business. Did I get it? Yeah, got it. Yay. I don't have to go chasing for it. Liking that. So all I'm going to do to, re to repair the hole in the floor is I'm going to take a wooden slat like this. I'm going to pre-drill a couple of holes to either side of the opening. I'm going to send this down through and with a piece of wire I'm going to hold it in place up against the hole and then drill my uh, my screws into the wood brace and then just screw my hole plugs that I pulled out of the one in the back into the one that I'm trying to fill. I lowered the piece of wood down with a piece of wire, 22 gauge copper wire that I wrapped around the wood to dangle it underneath the floor and hold it in place while I set my first screw. Now I can just take this wire off and set my remaining three screws. And now I have put a brace on the bottom of the opening, I can take my filler pieces and just stick them back in. With one screw in the middle, secure them into place. Seal it off with caulk. Call that done. Okay, so today is Sunday, September 22nd, 2013, and uh, my entire day had, today has been consumed with doing some shopping for running shoes for my youngest daughter and um, breaking down all of the wood and popping out all of the nails from the spool that a thousand feet of inch and five eighths coaxial cable came on very large spool uh, about six feet in diameter when the spool was sitting on the ground it was as wide as i am tall uh, and it was about three and a half feet wide a uh, bunch of two by fours a bunch of uh, 
one by eights and um, a lot of lumber. I probably have enough for two seasons, not just this season. But last night I was able to finish the air intake at least and make the changes to the floor to rearrange the, the air inlet. So that one modification in itself is going to make this stove a lot easier to live with because uh, even though I still have the wing nuts on the front cover, just spinning those wing nuts off and sliding that brick out, I don't have to remove the shroud any longer for the air inlet. It'll just come straight out. And uh, that's going to be a huge, huge improvement for uh, ease of clean out throughout the season. Uh, I probably still will try to figure out some other way to remount that door, but it's not as critical right now. What is more critical is that I get the additional heat sinks on uh, heat sink fins on the vertical flue going up, up the back wall and out. So that's all for now. That's the update on the rocket stove. Thank you all for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, I hope you will. Please rate, comment, share, and subscribe to my videos. As always, peace.